The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. The mind of Pat Papalizio is a wondrous thing. And for you Pac Wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pac Mentality Poppins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. Calendars have turned to March, and that means college wrestling championships, which all starts this weekend with the annual ACC championship up in Blattsburg. We're going to take a deep dive into that and much more on this brand new episode of the Pack Mentality Poppins Podcast. I'm your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Brian Reinhardt. And after a contractually required week off from podcasting last week, I'm, of course, joined by the head coach of the Wolfpack, Pat Pablizio. Brian, great to see you. You look refreshed, revived. Uh that week off really helped you a lot. Pat, that week off without you bugging me for stuff really energized me, and I'm ready to go here for March. It's good. Exciting time. The madness is here. <laughs> madness is here. And, you know, duels are fun, and the crowds really get intense, but I really enjoy the tournament setting. Multiple mats going on, different fan bases. But you coaches, you guys are awfully busy at these tournaments. Take us behind the scenes a little bit. What are you and the guys doing throughout the day when you're not wrestling, and how important is it for you – and them to follow along with bad assignments and who's up next. Yeah, you know, you go through the dual meets, it's pretty cut and dry. You know, you're you're going weight class after weight class. It's usually a two-hour event. You hit the tournament, and it starts early. You know, depending on what tournament it is, you know, you're you're there two hours before weigh-ins to make sure guys are ready to go down to weight. And then from there, you know, you're monitoring what they're eating after weigh-ins, getting their warm-ups in making sure after matches they're cooling down, rehydrating, uh, staying off their feet, staying focused. Uh, there's a lot of moving components that go on through the tournament. But, you know, the fortunate part is we have a lot on our, a lot of coaches on our staff and, and obviously uh, other people helping as well that aren't just coaches, but they can go out and get us food and run errands for the guys. So we're, we've been fortunate enough to have that support, but it is from sun up to sun down. Uh, you're you're constantly got somebody on your mind that you you want to help and make sure that they're getting their needs met. Now the ACCs are set up a little bit different than the NCAs. Uh, wrestlers are going to weigh in at 10 a.m. for the ACCs this weekend. The first round starts at 11. Now NC State has four guys that have a first round bye, so they're not going to be in action until the semifinals, which begin at one. So what do the guys do before those matchups? Yeah, so we'll we'll get weighed in. Those guys will go out, have a good breakfast, they'll go back to the hotel, get a nap in, or whatever they need. Maybe they'll stay at the venue, get a nap in there. And then their warm-up will come a little bit later. You know, it was, it, it, a lot of the guys will do it right after weigh-ins, and then these guys, knowing that they're not going to wrestle for a couple hours, they'll stay off their feet. Then they'll, they'll get that warm-up in probably right around 1230, about an hour before they have to wrestle, and, and just make sure they're ready to compete and go out there and have a great performance. I remember one year, Nick, obviously every year, he had that first round by. You woke him up. He had a first period pin. I was like, you woke up the sleeping bear to come out, get a pin, and then he left and went back to the hotel again. Yeah. He put, you know, put a total of what, eight minutes in in, a, in some of those tournaments. But uh, now we started our dive into the 2019 ACC championship. But since you were off the podcast duties last week, we got to go back and revisit some recent news before we get back into our preview. And, Going up to Blacksburg this weekend will seem like Groundhog's Day. Uh, NC State just made the bus trip up there to close out the regular season with a very exciting 17-16 criteria win against the Hokies to earn a share of the ACC Dual Championship, the second straight year the Wolfpack has earned that regular season trophy. And, Pat, that was an exciting duel. The Hokies won the first three. NC State won the next five. And then Virginia Tech won the last two. And we kind of had to figure out team points and all that. But in the end, NC State came away with the win. And what were some of your thoughts on that uh, good road victory? Yeah, we knew anytime we're, we're wrestling a team like Virginia Tech, they're, you're going to be in a in a dogfight there, and that's exactly what that was. Their fan base is really big into that dual meet. Their guys were well coached, well conditioned, and uh, that's what makes for for great wrestling. And our guys. You know, we didn't start the dual meet off the way we wanted, and and we needed somebody to get momentum shift back in our direction, and no better way to have that than a senior, fifth-year senior, Sean Fawes, go out there and do that for us. And that, and that really kind of triggered things. 
obviously having him and Tariq in our lineup changed the game tremendously for us and having Tariq down at 33 and, and being 100% ready to wrestle this time showed it and I, you know he wrestled a really good opponent and I thought dominated the majority of the match uh, positionings and uh, score wise too and then going out to 41 you know Moore showed up and, and wrestled really really good and He's been one of those guys that's been very consistent for us. So, you know, that momentum was going in our favor, and then you just throw Oliver in there, and then obviously closing it off with Hayden. You know, he was found himself in, in a war, probably a match that he didn't envision playing out that way, but it didn't stop the way that he was going to attack and stay relentless, and his conditioning obviously was a big factor in that, and the guy that he was wrestling fought him tooth and nail, and that was a great, great scrap, I thought. Across the board, every guy from every team went out there to compete. And when you do that, you're going to be in a great dual meet. And obviously, you can say this was a true team effort coming down to total team points scored by each team. And, and we were fortunate enough to probably some of those matches, Sean's match in particular, really lit up the scoreboard for us. And, and that probably was the difference right there. As I said, NC State won the ACC Dual Championship for the second year row. Feat that has not been accomplished at NC State since 2001 and 2002. But also with that win, NC State maintained its national ranking, finishing at number 10 in the final NWCA coaches poll. The fourth straight season, you guys have finished in the top 10 in that last poll. And that's a really impressive stat when you take into account that NC State has not been ranked in the top 10 at all since 1993 before the current stretch of 57 straight polls in the top 10. Yeah, and it is, it's a lot of people behind the scenes doing a tremendous job working together here to continue to move the needle in the right direction. Our guys are working extremely hard. You know, and this, this year, you know, not having everybody in the lineup week to week, you know, that, that caught, caught up to us at, at some of these duels we were in. But I think at the end of the day, it's going to prepare us more than ever for the postseason. And uh, these guys are obviously coming together at the right time right now. But, yeah, being in the top ten is something we take a lot of pride in. We want to win in everything we're doing, and these guys are true competitors. So I like, like the fact that we keep finishing there, and, and we expect to be there at this point where we're at as a program. How have the starters been in the practice room this week leading up to the ACC championship? Was having last week an off beneficial and getting some recovery time? Yeah, and we used it for training. We trained pretty hard the week before, and now it's time to taper a little bit. But it's been good. You know, we've traveled a lot the last couple of weeks, so to have this weekend here in in Raleigh and let the guys kind of regroup, they're very focused. Uh, I like that part of it right now. Our practices have been very intense but focused at the same time, and I think – our best wrestling lies ahead, and I think we've been showing that little by little. We've been creeping up uh, the past couple of weeks, getting guys to that level, and our conditioning being close to 100%, and more importantly, our health being as about as close to 100% as you can get for where we're at. Nine of your 10 ACC participants might have had this last weekend off, but a huge group of red shirts and backups, along with both of your heavyweights, Everybody went up to Delaware and wrestled in the final open tournament of the season, the National Collegiate Open. Uh, NC State set a new tournament record with 10 earning All-American finish that's placing in the top eight in their weight classes. And Camacho at 125 and Trent Hidley at 184 both brought home first place trophies. Are you happy with how the Redshirts ended their season at this Open? Yeah, I think you look at their body of work these guys have done. They've consistently improved those two guys stand out a little bit more than the rest. Those guys have won a lot and placed at high level tournaments like the scuffle. And I think people are going to be extremely excited to see both those guys in our lineup along with a few others next year as some of these seniors move on and we uh, rearrange our lineup. But I think we're going to have a very good group of young, talented guys that uh, the mentality is going to be right on the point of what we're looking for with this program. Um, and the development, you know, right now you look at some of these other guys. I was talking to Fields. He told me that a kid that placed in a state tournament a year ago that he had a chance to, to score a lot of points on against one of his opponents this weekend. And, you know, those are the little things that people don't really understand and know what's going on. But if you, you have one of your guys that maybe didn't finish where he wanted to be in high school and now all of a sudden they're dominating some of these kids that they were competitive with a year ago, I think shows what kind of depths in this room and uh, the development improvement that this coaching staff's working hard to do. And you just brought up, we're going to have to touch on some of these high school results here because – your newcomers that will be joining the wrestling room later this summer and next season. Uh, NC State signed 
nine signees during the fall signing period. Of those, seven competed in their high school state finals or prep nationals. Two were injured and had their season in early. But all seven won a championship in their final high school tournament. How impressive is that accomplishment? It's very good because when uh, you look at this group, probably in the beginning when you're recruiting these guys, you know, they, they all had pretty good high school careers to start with. But then as the year went on, they progressed to be some of the best kids in the country. And, uh, you know, that's what the staff does. They work hard to find some talented guys, but guys that their better days are ahead of them. And I think that's exactly what you're going to see with this class that we got in. Uh, there are some super talented kids and more than anything, the mentality and the attitude of these guys that are coming into this program mirror everything that we're about. And I'm confident you combine that class with the classes that have we've gotten over the last several years, we're, we're going to be in a really good spot as far as a program for the future. And the future sure does seem bright. We're living in the present, though, as they say. Now it's time to go up, back up to Blacksburg and come home with even more ACC trophies. And going up to Blacksburg, did you know as Donnie's movie selection increased tremendously this past time? He did have a very good movie, and I'm hoping that uh, we can add to that. Are you, are you taking the plunge with us as well? Yes, I will be going there, but right. Right. back to the movie. Well, well, we, yeah, I, I actually I packed some <laughs> snacks for you because I don't want to hear you complain on the bus. So I got your bat, your snacks already done for you. That's okay. I went to Burger King twice back up there last time, so that was rough. But Donnie, Revenge of the Nerds 1, Revenge of the Nerds 2, very well done. We'll see what he has in store yeah, for us. That was actually a classic. Brought me back to the glory days. That's good. But uh, I'm glad you paid attention to it. I did. Uh, you missed, that one. That's that, right. You didn't on the come, way home, I couldn't. I had to go on the road recruiting. That's right. You didn't so come back with us. You I, missed I missed that one. one. Okay. But you mentioned a lot this year in previous podcasts how deep the improved ACC has been. This year, the ACC set a new high mark with 37 NCAA allocations, and all six schools have at least one top seed for the ACCs. This conference has really improved top to bottom just in the last few years. This is going to be a fun championship. Yeah, absolutely. I think the depth in this conference is as good as it's ever been. And there's guys at every weight that are going to be competing for a national title, and that's what makes a good conference. And it's a smaller conference, so every match is going to matter. And you got some of the best coaches in the country right here in the ACC, so you know that everybody's going to have their guys ready to compete, which is going to make us all better for the NCAA tournament. So, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to the challenge, and it's definitely going to be one. Uh, I'm going to take a little dive into some weights here, talk about some of your guys. Uh, Sean Fowles, 125, he got the number two seed. First two years, he was in the ACC finals, fell short, comes in as a defending ACC champion. How have you seen Sean develop here? He's really wrestling good right now, really consistent. And 125 is really top heavy. So if the seeds play out, it's going to be a great battle of finals. But Sean wants to win another ACC title. Yeah, he's hungry as ever. Uh, you know, you look at the way that his year ended at the NCAA tournament a year ago was very disappointing because he, you know, he did get injured out there to where he required surgery at the end of the season and got himself healthy, was able to go wrestle in, uh, the uh, UW23 World Team, uh, the World's Championship, had a really good performance there. And, you know, we used them in certain dual meets when we needed them, certain tournaments here and there. And it was it was tough at times because, you know, he let week to week is when he does best, managing his weight and weighing in and being in a consistent routine. And we kind of were waiting for the right time to do that, and we figured – the best time is at the end of the year, and now we have everything consistent, and you've seen his wrestling continue to improve, and he's had some really big performances for us, and there's no doubt he's extremely motivated to accomplish his goals this year, and I'm excited because he's a true competitor, and he is looking forward to the postseason right now, and you can see it when he's in there training. Up at 133, a lot of new faces. Tariq Wilson from your team, he's got the two seed. Uh, Tariq, as everybody knows, missed a lot of action came back at Virginia Tech. How's Tariq now? And I think a lot of people forgot he finished third at the NCAAs, but last year he was fourth at the ACC. So I know he really wants to improve upon that. Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of times you need that one breakthrough performance to know that you're that good, and that's where we've been at with him. Best part about Tariq is everybody's forgotten about him, and it's motivated him, and I'm excited because he's a dangerous style to wrestle. He's a gamer. He lives for the postseason. And I think it's just fueling the fire for a guy like Tariq, as competitive as he is, because I hope they keep him as 11, 12, 13 seed, because it's really going to shake up the brackets for a guy that has his 
style of wrestling. Up at 141, Jamel Morris won a perfect 4-0 and got the number one seed. What I think is interesting about this 141 class, no top 20 guys, but all six guys from the ACC in the last coaches' penal rankings are ranked between 21 and 29. Talk about all six wrestlers just being grouped together. This is going to be a really fierce battle here for this yeah, title. This is a very deep weight class for our conference. And like you said, every guy is right there with each other. And I think it's going to come down a little bit of styles and who believes and who wants it. And best part about our guy is he's never had the opportunity to go out there and he's going to, he's been taking full advantage of his opportunities and he's looked phenomenal. He's been one of the most consistent guys we've had second semester for us and a breath of fresh air for a guy that, you know, a weight class where we thought we were going to be in a little bit of trouble and we flipped it around to a positive and I'm excited. Anytime you give somebody an opportunity and they, they go out there and they take advantage of it, you want to see success. And I think that's exactly what you're going to see here. Up at 149, three of the top seven national wrestlers all sit there. Justin Oliver from NC State's the third seed. He's a graduate. This is his first ACC championship. He told me earlier this week he was actually looking forward to having a first-round match and then going into the semifinals. What do you think about Justin's chances here at 149? I think that, you know, he knows what he's up against. He's got two, uh, well, four really good kids uh, right now that are seated in his his weight class. Uh, obviously, two of them have beaten him, and it's it's one of those where you know he's a fifth year senior. He has the experience. He knows what he needs to do. And I think the best part about Justin is we've been very strategic in his training to make sure you know he's his body at some point. You know, when you're in college for as long as you are and you're training the way you are, you can get a little dinged up, beat up, and you just get him an old body uh you're young but it takes a toll on you and that's something we've been strategic with we did a lot with mock last year where we, you know we can't train the same way as you might train a young freshman so one of the things with justin and i'm excited to see is we've really pushed his conditioning up the last several weeks and it's showing in practice right now and it's time uh it's time for him to to come out wrestling as hard as he possibly can and and i think he lives for the postseason. He's shown that he can get on the podium, and no better time to do it than these next couple of weeks for him. Call Justin old. He's about 22, 23. How, He's how, an how old do, body. How does that make me and you feel? We're like, well, you got to think. You I mean, know, you're real age. You get dog years when you're a wrestler. If for every year you do in college, you get seven, what is it, seven years? Is it one yes. year? Yeah. So I tell these guys, if you're a fifth year senior, your body's like 35. If you know, if you're four years in college, you're 28. It takes a toll. The training isn't easy. You know, what do you, you, do, you what do you do for training, Brian? Tread, treadmill. Treadmill. Yeah. All right. We do that when we're done in practice. <laughs> Up at 157, Hayden Hadley once again went 5-0 and in ACC action, number one seed. But as you said, he was tested at Virginia Tech, always a tough matchup against Pitt. That conf, uh, excuse me, 157, uh, five guys ranked in the top 25. So even though Hayden went perfect 5-0, and that's going to be a real battle. Yeah, and those guys all wrestle extremely hard. I think you got some really good talented guys in that weight class. And, they, you know, style-wise, a lot of times these guys adjust the way they – they wrestled the Hayden, and that's something he's got to pay attention to. And we've worked extremely hard this year. You know, guys scouting you and trying to do certain things is how do you change up your wrestling? And he's been in those matches, and he's had to do that. And I think that's what's going to prepare him best for the postseason right now is you've seen everybody's best strategy, and you've beaten it already. So now that you know from the start that that's what you're going to get, you got to go out and attack it. And uh, he's a gamer. You know, he's a, a guy that obviously has been in the NCAA Finals, and he lives for, for competition like this, and this is what he trains for. Up at 165, Thomas Bullard, he got the third seed. Um, another tough weight class here. Another four guys ranked in your top 25. Uh, Thomas was redshirting last year, but looking forward, he had a good run two years ago. What do you expect out of Thomas at 165? To go out and compete, I think you know it's one of those where he's these guys, both Thomas and Daniel, have been extremely successful in, in wrestling, the sport of wrestling, and uh, we need those guys more than ever right now to go out and wrestle at their best. And they've shown that, I think, in the last several duel meets we've had. Um, they've had a couple letdown matches, and then all of a sudden, you know, they, these guys flip the switch and have been competing extremely hard. Whether or not they're they're winning or losing in a match right now, you're seeing true competitors and putting themselves in position to go out and win matches. And, and that's what we're going to need from both of them this weekend. 
And Daniel Blair at 174, he's also going to be the third seed. Last year, he really had a great run. He finished strong, kind of propelled him to the NCAAs. I'm expecting you expect the same from him now. Yeah, and it's what we just talked about. These guys are gamers. They've been in big matches and tournaments their whole career, and we need them to do the same thing, and I'm excited to see both of them. It's the first time ever that these guys both have been able to wrestle in the ACCs and you know, chance for postseason wrestling right now. So it's good to have both these guys in our lineup, and I, I do like the way that they're competing right now. They're wrestling extremely hard and aggressive, and that's what I want of all our guys right now. Up at 184, Nick Renan, he will be the three seed. Uh, 184, they got five allocations and obviously very top heavy with three guys in the top three. And everybody asks me, how's Nick doing? What's his health wise? What do you see from him in the ACCs? Yeah, I think when you look at that weight class and you see a four seed returning all American in the ACC, that tells you how deep that weight class is because any one of those guys right now can show up and compete to win a nat- not just the ACCs, a national title. You got. Four guys in that weight right now that are national contenders to win a title, and it's going to come down to who shows up. Uh, Nick, you know, has been a little inconsistent, and that's due to some some things. They've had some setbacks, but we know and he knows that he can go out and take care of business right now, and I, I know he's got his mind set to get some revenge on some of the competition that he's seen the last several weeks, and uh, I hope he goes in there with that pissed-off attitude that we've seen and know what he's capable about because that's what it's going to require for him to win and uh, beat some of these guys that, you know, got some wins off him, and he's, he takes that stuff personal. I really like a pissed-off Nick Green, and he's very fun to talk he is. to. He actually is, and he's really hard to wrestle when he's like that. So hopefully he listens to this and he gets even more pissed off. Piss him off, will you? <laughs> Uh, now, he, say he, something to piss him I off. I was going to say, now this is a guy you can't really make mad, but Malik McDonald, final ACC championship here. He's going to be entering as the three seed. It's been a couple of years since he's gotten in the starting line for the ACCs, but I know he has a little bit of a list. He wants to get to add a couple guys that beat him earlier. What do you see from Malik in his last season? I've seen focus. I've seen consistency, and I've seen his improvement uh technique wise and the mental side of things and i think this is a perfect time for him to do that every match that he's lost it's been a minor mistake that's cost him big points and it bothers him so much that i know he's going to fix it at the right time and that's all he needs to do because i i could go back at a lot of these losses he had and it's like if you don't get hit in this move or that move you're winning this match you know you get four takedowns to one and you find a way to lose the match let's eliminate the mistake and I promise you the outcome will be in your favor. And that's something he's going to have to do this weekend, um, you know, getting through certain matches and, and being ready to wrestle from the start. Because that, that is, the, the, that weight class is pretty close grouped together there with a lot of those guys. And finally, at heavyweight, uh, it's been a battle at NC State back and forth all year between two freshmen. Deontay Wilson got the call. What went behind that decision? And how do you see uh, Wilson in his first ACC championship? Pretty simple. We sent three guys to uh, the NCOs this weekend, and I said whoever has the best outcome is going to be the guy wrestling in this tournament. We even threw Tyree in there, and uh, he was probably a stall call away from making the finals and being the guy. And sometimes things play out for a reason, and they got to wrestle. All these guys got to wrestle each other, and Deontay beat both guys, and therefore in our sport you can take away all the politics and go with the guy that got the win, and that's the only fair way a lot of times to do it. Sometimes coaches does have to get in there and say, hey, we went through in the years past where maybe this guy can win a wrestle off and this guy can go further in a tournament, but that's not the case right now, and we really do need somebody to step up at heavyweight and go out there and, and score some points in this tournament, and uh Deontay, if he wrestles like what I saw at this tournament, I, I think he can compete and beat anybody at any given time. But he's got he's the one that's got to go out there and compete. And we need an aggressive heavyweight because um, we haven't seen that a whole lot this year. But somebody that's willing to attack and put up points is somebody that's going to win. Again, the 2019 ACC Wrestling Championship will be this Saturday up at Virginia Tech. Every match is going to be streamed on ACC Network Extra. And, of course, we're going to be there live on Twitter at Pack Wrestle for all the updates. So, Pat... That was a very good breakdown, a lot of excitement, some good seats for NC State, potential for a lot of exciting matchups. Good luck to you guys up there. Thank you. Appreciate it, and I uh, hope you know we can get you on doing some social media stuff from we're up there, too, in Blacksburg. We'll try. Give me my per diem. Put the I'll popcorn down, and let's get to work. 
Pat, go get some rest. You look a little tired today. <laughs> you didn't bring your energy, but I appreciate you doing the podcast. Now, a week off really affected you. Let's hope it doesn't affect the guys. So. Joining us on the Pack Mentality Pop-Ins Podcast, now a two-time guest, NC State starter at 149 pounds, Justin Oliver. Justin, you don't have much free time these days between wrestling and school, so thanks for joining us on the podcast. Of course, I'm glad to be here. Now, I said two-time guest on the podcast. We first had you on back in early May under much different circumstances. Not only did I meet you for the very first time, but we also taped the podcast episode that same day you decided to transfer to NC State. I'm sure it's it was a hectic time back in May, and... Looking back at your transfer process now, how much of a whirlwind was it? Uh, it was definitely definitely a crazy process going from uh, literally committing here to being here in the same day. Obviously, is a little uh, <laughs> a little crazy, but the whole process was just uh, definitely chaotic. Going on visits pretty much every weekend towards the end of the semester. So balancing out with finals and then finally committing here was was definitely a lot of weight off my back. And then I just wanted to get out here at that point. So I was going to say, going back to that story, you you were talking to Pat, you're talking to the coaches. You didn't even tell them you were coming. You <laughs> jumped in the car from Michigan and drove and just said, I'm here. <laughs> Assuming it all worked out. Yeah. Um, I uh, obviously – after getting my release, hadn't really been able to train like I wanted to because the whole aspect of not being able to train in the room that was closest to me and not really having partners out there for me to work out with. Um, I wanted to get to where I was going. I wanted to get to training right away so I could uh, get ready for the season and uh, just kind of hopped in the car and <laughs> drove out 12 hours to uh, to Raleigh. The car is still here? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> But you've been in Raleigh since May. Have you adapted to becoming a su- semi southerner down here? Um, that's that's tough. You know, I'm still from Michigan, so I still say "oh" sometimes. <laughs> it's a very Michigan thing. Um, <laughs> I do say "y'all" a little bit more now, though. So I, w- I would say it's uh, changed a little bit. What are some of the differences between being in Michigan and being here in Raleigh? Well, obviously, the first thing I have to say is the weather, because I'm pretty sure it just snowed five inches back in Michigan the other day. I was talking to my girlfriend. She was complaining about how they haven't gone a full like week without having some sort of crazy natural weather going on down there. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, it's it's like 50 degrees here. 50 is a cold day. I mean, yeah, it's been 70 yeah. degrees here. Yeah, no. Oh, like complain about it raining a little bit, and she'll be like, hey, <laughs> it's snowing here, so you can you can be quiet. <laughs> Since you've been gone a little bit, what have you missed about back home? Um, just obviously a little bit being closer to family and family and friends, my girlfriend. Um, outside of that, um, you know, I've really enjoyed just the the team out here and the coaching staff, and just being in a little bit warmer weather. Um, I do not miss the Michigan roads. The roads were terrible. <laughs> especially compared to out here. And the only thing I can complain about a little bit is some of the drivers don't like to use their uh, their blinkers here. So NC State wrestling wrestlers, they love to complain about the North Carolina drivers. <laughs> I've noticed that, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've had to adjust the food, the weather, but what about the practice room? I mean, you spent four years in another program and just a few months here at NC State, and all coaches have different training regiments, how have you adapted to the way NC State does things? Um, it's it's been a alarmingly easy adaptation, actually, just because there's a coach here for literally any type of style that you could wrestle and any type of like personalization you could ask for. Like Adam, you get a little bit more of like a hard nose wrestling a lot more like hand fighting a lot more just kind of pushing pulling donnie's a little bit more funky a little bit more like unorthodox you got ob who's been on the freestyle circuit forever and was good at folk style back at oklahoma state so he gives you a good bit of uh kind of different perspectives on things too and then obviously pat being as long as he is can uh relate to longer people so it's been uh it's been nice having a different kind of perspective and a different look onto things from every coach that we have. Pat's claim to fame is the Renan headlock. <laughs> have not seen you hit a headlock yet. Nah. Does Pat not teach you it? Um, no, you know, I, uh, 
not not big headlock guy yet. You know, <laughs> I'm waiting for. I want I want Renan to teach it to me though. You know, he uh, he seemed to uh, perfect it. So. You've wrestled with two different D1 programs, but I've heard you say in other interviews you're really appreciative of how NC State wrestling treat, or excuse me, how NC State treats its wrestling program and yeah. the support and resources you guys have. Maybe give us a little behind the scenes intel. What maybe has surprised you about the support for NC State wrestling? Um, you know, just the amount of resources within the athletic training department. Obviously, I'm. Um, an older wrestler now, so I <laughs> utilize that a good bit. But uh, just the timeliness of that that kind of stuff behind the scenes, just making sure that my body's staying healthy, um, just the within the weight room, just having like there's snacks ready readily available at any time you need, like before lift, after lift. There's protein for you to get in before or after workouts whenever you need it. Um, just stuff like that, and then going on trips you have meals planned out for you before uh like the day before weigh-ins you got breakfast the day of weigh-ins just kind of the little things like that instead of uh kind of being on your own for those meals um another big thing is just the uh dining at case meals every week is big because it kind of forces you to eat healthier which obviously in wrestling is kind of important and uh i was kind of used to having a more individualistic approach on that to where it was on me and it can be hard and a little bit more expensive to uh eat as healthy as you would like to (laughs) being here in the south day after ncaa tournaments what is the one food, southern food, that you are going to try that you might not have had a chance to? Um, I'm a big breakfast person, so I think I'm going to end up at Big Ed's eat, yeah. eating eating the breakfast like I did when I first got out here. That was the first breakfast place I went to, and it's going to be the first place I go after NCAA. Shout out to Big Ed's. Uh, sponsorship <laughs> may be available. Thank you, Justin it, Oliver. But- it, it would be appreciated. <laughs> From what I can tell, you might not be the most vocal guy or that guy that yells and jumps up and down, but you're in your fifth season, but you're first with this squad. How do you balance being the new guy, but also being a leader with a lot of previous college experience? Um, You know, obviously it took a little bit to uh, really get an understanding of the team dynamic and chemistry that was already established within the team, but uh, I try to take it a little bit more as like an individualistic approach. Um, I'm not a vocal, like full team leader that'll just kind of try to give the whole team a motivational speech. I like to kind of keep it a little bit more individualistic and speak with the individuals that I know might need a little bit of like support or guidance instead of talking to everybody. So I try to uh, lead a little bit more by example and take, take those people that are maybe struggling a little bit or maybe just a little less experienced and give them a little bit of help and guidance. And it's funny you mentioned sports medicine. I think the last two times I had to find you, you were down in (laughs) sports med. So we were speaking about being a fifth year guy. And as a college dresser, you're here in your final season, a lot of wear and tear on those tires. What's the difference physically from you being a freshman to now being in your fifth season of college wrestling? Oh man. Uh, (laughs) Everything hurt a lot less, and uh, the recovery time was a lot faster. You know, you would uh, go into a hard workout, you would bust through it, you'd be sore for a little bit, and then in a really short turnaround, you'd be all right again. And, uh, going into this last season, soreness takes a little bit more effort to uh, <laughs> to get rid of. You know, you gotta go to the training room a little bit more often and get in that cold tub a little bit more than I had to my f- my freshman year. You know, I don't think I spent a single <laughs> single day in the cold tub my freshman year just because my body recovered a little bit faster, a little bit easier. You obviously you're in the room, but you're also in the room with red shirts a little bit. A lot of questions next year. We're going to 149 is going to be coming open. What have you seen? We have a lot of I think we have about three or four guys red shirt at 149. What have you seen from those red shirts? Uh, They they definitely know that the spot's going to be open next year. So they're excited in there. They're uh, they're working, working hard to try to fill the role next year. And it's going to be a it's going to be a tough, tough battle for them all. But uh, I think whoever does come out on top is going to end up filling the spot really well as long as they uh, 
just continue to work the way they're working now. Got to, it's like relationships. You got to continue to do what you do in the beginning throughout to make sure that, uh, you continue to get better and continue to, uh, essentially gain ground on the competition. How was it this year? You've only been here one year, but you went through senior day. You had friends, <laughs> family. How, what, I mean, were there different reactions that you had within yourself for senior day or what you think? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it was still my last home dual meet. I mean, it might have, may have been my only six dual meet in, in Reynolds, <laughs> but still my last dual meet. And, uh, it's just a moment where you can take the time to appreciate everybody that's been a part of the process that you've went through to get to where you are, where I was at the time, which obviously has been a long road starting when I was six years old. So it was just kind of a moment to be appreciative of everything that I've been blessed with, everything that kind of has led me to where I am now. And, uh, whether it be the fans that were super incredible here and just welcomed me right away and were all on board or whether it be some of the fans from high school or some of the fans from central that still support me and still uh, hope to see me do well. You know, it's all been, uh, it's been a long journey. So I'm super appreciative of all those people. A senior day. And I believe up at Virginia tech too, your, your father was there, correct? Yeah. yeah. How is it that your family's, able to make some of these trips you're winding down but you have to be appreciative of that oh yeah definitely um there's very few dual meets that he hasn't been to in my entire life (laughs) ever um but he loves wrestling he loves watching me wrestle because it's been something that we've been doing like every weekend since i was six years old um and this being my last season i don't think he would want to miss any of that for the world so, as you're well aware, the ACC is absolutely loaded at 149 pounds. Three ACC wrestlers are among the top eight nationally in this week's internet rankings. We have yourself at number eight, a Connor from UNC is number five, and Fine Silver from Duke is number four. And in addition, you had a match against current number two Jordan from Ohio State. What a competition level for you <laughs> this year! How does this prepare you for your postseason run? Um, you know. It- helps with just kind of the feel of those top ranked guys. Obviously you go into those matches and if you haven't wrestled the top ranked guy, you're not really going to necessarily be as prepared for a dog fight as you would be having wrestled those matches. So I feel like having those matches under my belt going into the postseason is definitely helpful and, we haven't wrestled a tournament in a tournament setting yet this year. So I'm excited for that. You know, it keeps you fresh with that. And, uh, I like to believe once I get into a tournament setting, catch a roll and just kind of start cruising through. So we'll be looking to do that at the ACC tournament when that first match and roll through to the finals. Great point that you brought up. I was just (laughs) going to say, uh, we're taping this before the ACC brackets are released, but it looks like you'll be the number three seed and, what do you have to do to win a conference title this season? It looks like you're going to have to go through O'Connor in the semifinals and then find Silver in the finals. So what are you going to have to do that Saturday up at Virginia Tech to bring home an individual title? Uh, you know, I'm going to have to – luckily for me, I actually get a first-round match, actually. I'm I'm glad for that. So you prefer the first-round match rather than weigh in, wait for four hours, and then wrestle semifinals? Yeah, I like to get that okay. kind of first match under the belt, get all the uh, – all the kinks out in that first match, you know, kind of get yourself ready to roll. And then, uh, you know, I just got to wrestle my matches, got to do what I'm best at and not get caught up in uh, what exactly they're doing, what they're necessarily good at. Like O'Connor last match kind of controlled my head and that ended up kind of wearing out my legs a little bit more than, I needed to. So I'm just kind of working on a little bit better of a game plan and uh, using the momentum from those matches to just continue rolling through all the way to uh, even nationals. Justin Oliver, revenge tour. Yes, sir. That's what I was going to say. But the ACCs are back up in Blacksburg at Virginia Tech this weekend. Uh, NC State just made that bus ride up there for the final regular (laughs) season duel. I should ask you before this question, 
on these bus rides, I don't pay attention. Do you watch the movies? Do you sit with headphones? What do you do? Uh, I actually forgot headphones last trip, okay. which was tragic. <laughs> tragic because of Donnie's movie selection? <laughs> no, no, not not because of Donnie's movie selection. Okay. Because of – I get car sick actually, which – as you can imagine, on a bus ride is not really ideal when you're stuck on a bus for three hours. But uh, that usually causes me to end up uh, just kind of laying down and going to sleep or uh, just laying there listening to music. Okay. You are missing some fine 80s movies. I, I, I've i seen bits and pieces of them. They're, uh, they're definitely – <laughs> definitely interesting my my girlfriend's actually a really big fan of beetlejuice so she was she was excited with that movie selection I, a lot of guys became fans of beetlejuice yeah, yeah. but uh you know we talked about that last trip up at virginia tech it came down to criteria you were the fourth to last match were you able to watch after your match knowing the situation or just talk about that night up in uh, blacksburg yeah you know i uh finished my match and Obviously, having Hayden come after you is pretty uh, pretty nice because you want to watch that. <laughs> yeah, match. yeah, exactly. Um, but I knew the duel was going to end up being close, and it was kind of a situation that I wasn't necessarily used to being in because we never really had the chance to compete for a MAC title at Central. It's kind of Missouri was a dominant force there, so it was it was an exciting thing to be a part of. But it was also incredibly nerve-wracking because in high school, any time that we had a chance to win a title, we ended up losing. <laughs> so I was just sitting there, like, basically praying that we didn't lose. And uh, we ended up coming away with it, which was a nice change of pace for me because uh, state finals, I think my junior and senior year, we lost. My junior year, we were up by three going into the last match. And our kid was winning nine to two. He ended up getting headlocked and pinned, and we lost in the last second. So that was kind of kind of tragic. And that was all I was thinking about that entire time. I was like, man, I <laughs> really, really want to get this ACC title. I was gonna say, you kind of enjoyed afterwards. You like seeing the trophy. A little bit of a relief for you. It sounds like just, but that's the first step of what you're trying to do yeah, this season. And you've been around NCAA wrestling for quite some time. How does Reynolds Coliseum and the Wolfpack fans that come to duels compare to some of your previous experiences? Um, it's definitely, definitely right up there with, uh, some of the top programs, I would say, obviously the dual attendance at the Oklahoma state Iowa duel was a packed house and, uh, or so it played out. We, we weren't there. Yeah. It could be camera angles. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But, uh, (laughs) um, no, it's definitely Reynolds is one of the top arenas wrestling right now, I would say in college wrestling and, Outside of the NCAA tournament, which obviously is going to get tons of people, um, I would say it's definitely one of the venues that you got to wrestle at before you're done with college wrestling. I was going to say, you've been to the NCAAs obviously three times, All-American, round of 12, round of 12. But that's, you know, there's a lot of mats going on, a little bit, you hear roars every once in a while. As compared to a duel at a school like Virginia Tech where the crowd is just on you, booing you, or Reynolds where they're cheering you, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the duel action where everybody's watching or the tournament where it's a little more spread out and sporadic? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, home duels are obviously always always fun because you've got your home crowd just cheering you on, rooting for the best. But in the tournament setting, it's uh, – it's just fun because it's a bunch of controlled chaos going on. <laughs> you got you got a section of your fans cheering for you, and you got another section yeah. of fans cheering against you, and then you got the whole rest of the arena that's completely on a different page, <laughs> or maybe watching your match. So uh, both are definitely fun experiences, I would say. Now, a couple of wrestlers, they've also said their best experience is to be booed. Uh, Virginia Tech, their fans were asking for stall calls in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> but, you know, I guess each wrestler is a little bit different. But <laughs> stepping off the mat, you made the rounds on social media this week. You were sporting a very 9-to-5 work outfit. Um, <laughs> the NC State Student Athlete Engagement and Leadership Office held a job fair, which you were able to attend. And you already have your undergrad degree from Central, and now you're working on a master's certificate. What are your plans after this spring semester? Uh, still playing it, playing it by ear right now, but uh, obviously I'm taking all the opportunities that I can to 
get interviews with companies and just kind of see where I could possibly end up working. Um, there's still a possibility of me wrestling after this year, you know, with the trials being here in Raleigh is definitely something that makes it a little bit more appealing to me. Um, I'm definitely, definitely still playing the field a little bit, you know, trying to see what options kind of lie in front of me. So if anybody's trying to hire somebody in sales, uh, marketing or analytics, let me know. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, promote yourself a little bit. Take wrestling outside of the equation. What exact field or what kind of job are you looking for? Uh, I've been looking a little bit into sales and marketing. Um, big, big, uh, big fan of marketing. I, uh, I buy a lot of products, so I think I, I know how they're sold, <laughs> uh, know what appeals to people, but can you get the podcast a sponsorship? Uh, I can try. Yeah. Okay. You know, that, that would be great. That, that would be in sales. So, uh, <laughs> We'll work on it. Justin, thanks for joining us on the podcast today. Good luck to you both at the NCAs and the ACCs as you wrap up your college wrestling career. I appreciate it. I'm excited to uh, go out there and compete for a national title for the Wolfpack. And I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Poppins podcast covering all things NC State wrestling. Until next time, Wolfpack wrestling fans, go Pack! Poppins Podcast is produced by the Mad Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to madtalkonline.com.